Why don't you stand with me? Let's, let's lift up the name of Jesus in praise and song. Amen. Today is a good day. Amen. Come on and give the choir a name.
just getting ready to do. Amen. How many came for worship on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly glad to be here. Amen.
in the building that know that God is amazing. Is there anybody in the building that know that God is truly amazing? If we woke you up this morning, that's enough to give God some praise. Isn't it? That's enough to say that God is amazing. God is amazing. Somebody ought to lift your hand in the building.
sometimes not even knowing words to say because it seems that man has become just, just depraved. It certainly seems like the time of Noah. And so we come, Lord, just to say, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Let your Shekinah glory fall on us. For except you have mercy on us, then we will not be saved. Except you bless us, we will not be blessed. Because we are doing things that make no sense whatsoever. But Lord, we just came to say thank you. I know that there must be a lesson in this for us. Because you've never made a mistake. And the old folks say you said, I look low. And Lord, we trust you will. We trust your way. And Lord, we just came to say thank you. And we say, Lord, look at us and look upon us and touch us that we might understand the lesson you're trying to teach us. And let us understand it in a magnanimous way. Let us understand it in a hurry. Because we won't even have enough men in America to feel an army. Because we're going to kill each other. We're going to have to ask the Chinese, the Japanese, please send us a men. We're going to kill each other. Do something, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For you said all we had to do was ask. That's what you said. And it shall be given. Lord, we're asking now, come upon us, walk upon us, touch our minds, touch our hearts, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the pulpit sing your praises. Let the songs of Zion be sung by the choirs. And let the congregation praise you. Because we know, Lord, that you're in charge. Hallelujah. And besides you, there is none other. So bless us, Lord. As we come to praise you today, touch us, Lord. Lift us in a magnanimous praise. In Christ's name we pray. And count it done by the blood. Sunday in the month, and we have some uh, June birthday babies in the house today, and so we're going to get ready and sing that birthday song, and I'm going to ask all of those who are born in the month of June, we stand so we can love them, pray and trust.
So this choir is going to get ready and bring us another note, and I will be getting back up with the word for today.
Jackson is coming. Why don't you clap your hands as he comes? And if you don't know it's at your fingertips, you don't get it. You're not able to use it. But I want to put it right in your lap today where you can just lap it right on up. Because that's what, that's what pastoring and preaching is all about. In other words, but it still would be the word of God. And what I like about seminary, when I went to seminary, seminary taught us the early church and how the beliefs of the early church and how things were then. But now things has been watered down by our selfishness, self-greed. In other words, they are more inclined with the institution than what the word of God says. And so mankind get caught up in that. But I want you to know, I want you to know that today, as we come around the Lord's table, this table ought to remind us of the pain, of the suffering that our Lord and Savior went through for us. It ought to remind us when we see the bread and, and, and the wine, we ought to be reminded that Jesus bled and died for me. It ought to make this table come alive. Am I right about that? Yeah. But, but, but let us look at 
who was at the table. Jews was at the table. Jesus was a Jew. He, 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 was, at, he was at this table. And we call this table the Holy Sacrament. Holy Sacrament. And when we see that word holy sacrament, let me tell you, that is a Latin term that the Roman Catholic Church got from the military. They got it from the military. In other words, each soldier that joined the military, the sacrament really was an oath. It was an oath that the soldier made to the military that he would be loyal. He would be faithful to his superiors and commander. So when we take this Lord's Supper today, we take this bread today, we ought to take this bread with what we have in mind that, Lord Jesus, I am going to be loyal. I'm going to be faithful. No matter what comes my way, I'm still going to call you King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You are my commander. Because I'm thankful for what you've done for me. And, and, and also, 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 that, that sacrament. But also, this, this, this time is called Eucharist. Eucharist. And when we think of the word Eucharist, what comes to mind is it's a Greek term that means to be thankful. Being thankful. When you come to this table, you come to this table with thanksgiving in your heart. You, you come thanking Lord Jesus. You, you didn't have to do it, but you did. In, in other words, Lord Jesus, I, you, you took my suffering. The sins that I've done, you came and suffered in my place. And Lord Jesus, I come just to say thank you. You didn't have to die for my sins, but you loved me so much. And Lord Jesus, you knew even before I was born that I was going to mess up. And you sent your son, Jesus to Christ, to pay the price for my sins. And I just come to say thank you. I can't say thank you enough. If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough, God, to say thank you what you've done for me. Yes, yes. So when we hear the word Eutiphus, it means giving thanks to God. But then, then there's, a, there's another word that we call communion. And, and communion is a word, uh, it's a Greek term that calls konania. 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 And that means konania. That means Christian fellowship. In, in other words, it's a Christian fellowship of common believers. When we come together all on one accord, it, 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 it's a body of believers, yeah. Christian believers. In, in other words, when I come to this table, I have to leave my title. Right. I do I can't bring my title in here. But when I come to this table, all of us are on the same page. It's no big eyes, no little ears. We all have the same common denominator. All of us need Jesus. Am I right about that? In, in, in other words, I can't come to this table mad at you. I can't come to this table with a, another motive in mind. I can't come to this table looking at you and I'm mad because you did something to me. When we come to this table, we have to ask the Lord to forgive us. That's why Paul said, let a man come on man, talk to me somebody. I got some baptized believers in the house. Let a man or woman examine himself. That's right. Before we come to this table, because this table is holy. Am I right about it? This is a holy table that we're coming to, and we have to come to this table on God's term and not on our turn. But, but, but communion, let's 
look and see where communion started from. How did we get to this point? And in other words, the Lord said, where did it come from? Well, but it started in Egypt. And, and, and let me tell you how it started. When the Hebrews was under the bondage of the Egyptians. In other words, the Hebrews, God was blessing them. And they lived in a section called Goshen. And that section was prospering. And they were multiplying so fast that the Egyptian Pharaoh was frightened and began to say, if they keep on multiplying, they got to take over us. So we got to put them under some stress. We got to put some more work on them. In other words, we got to give them a birth control. In other words, if they work hard and work long, all they can do is sleep and work. And so that was their mindset. But what, but what happened? How many know when the devil meant for evil, God always turned that thing around and made it good out of it. And in other words, whatever's happening bad in your life, you see the bad, but there's a good behind it. So, so when they began to put pressure on the Hebrew, on the Israelites, and working them hard, they began, the Israelites began to call on their father, God Almighty. Yes. You know how it is. Brother Adrian, if you got a child, a daughter, a son, and that son come to you and say, Daddy, I'm having trouble at school. I got a boy that's bothering me. Now, Daddy's going to go to school and see what's going on. He'll go to school and maybe probably go right then. Go to school right then. Adrian might be uh, banding up a pace in the car, but that son called. He going to see check on that son. So now, if, 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 if we can do these things, how much more can our heavenly father do? See, you have to be careful when you're messing with a child of God. But when they call on the name of Jesus, God will come check on them. So what God did, he, he put a bush on the fire to get Moses' attention. And when Moses saw the bush burning, but not burning up, uh, 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 but God told Moses, pull your shoes up. You're getting on holy ground now. He said, I want you to go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And in other words, I'm not going to go through all the little stuff he said, but it was back and forth. But he gave Moses ten plagues. And, and, he, and, and Moses put nine plagues on him. Pharaoh still wouldn't let the people go. But when he put that tenth plague on it. And, and that was that was the death of the firstborn. And so whatever what Moses did, Moses told all the Israelites, now what I want you to do, get your best lamb. And I want you to kill it. And I, and I want you to get the blood from it and, and, and put it all around the door, on the left side, the right side, and over against the top. Because the deaf angel is going to pass through the night. And in whatever door the blood is covered on, the deaf angel is going to pass on by. And, 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 and in other words, in other words, in other words, uh, uh, and I want you to eat all of this lamb up for 12 o'clock, for midnight. And, and, and Moses got them all together. And when the deaf angel came through, he bypassed the houses with the blood on the door. You see, when you take the Lord's Son, he'll be good now. There's two miracles that's taking place. The, the first miracle is the deaf angel had to pass by. Am I right about that? Yeah. Do I have any folk in here that the, the blood has taken care of you? Yeah. You know, many of us in here right now should be dead sleeping in our grave. Right, right. but, 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 but the blood was on us. The angel had to pay it over us because we were covered in the blood. Right. Am I right about that? Many of us now, some of us can't praise the Lord and it, it, it 
we, we got to win something before we praise the Lord. We got to hit the lottery to praise the Lord. But, but I believe there's a few of us in here. There's a few of us in here. We don't mind praying to the Lord. Am I right about it? There's a few of us in here that I was covered by the blood. Because I drank enough of alcohol to be dead. If you didn't drink alcohol, many of us in here can say, well, I farted enough. I farted enough. And I played the fool enough. I ought to be dead right now. But the blood is coming to me. Do I have any wisdom in the house? Maybe I didn't want no voice right now. But somebody in here said, I cracked up enough cracks. That I ought to be dead. Some of you high producers say, well, I spoke kings enough. Y'all will be dead sleeping in my grave. If somebody in here can say, well, I'm dead again, I ought to be dead, but, 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 but I was covered. Do I have, I was covered. I've been in fights, but I was covered. I've been in wrecks, but I was covered. Do I have any folks that don't want to stand up? I don't know why you do I am just so happy. I am just happy. I can it. He saved. He saved. He covered it. I am alive. But that's the best. But this is going to make you shout this. Hit me, Lord. Hit me, Lord. Now, 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 now. When the Passover started, let me tell you now. From the Hebrew, Hebrew men, 20 years and older, there were 603,550 men, 20 years and older. And then at that time, there was 22,273 firstborn. And if you would measure this kind of calculation up and with estimation from the girl, baby girls and baby boys up to 20 and on past 20, the calculation was 2.5 to 3 million people. Now, I, I want Brother, Brother Boo to pull this up on, on, on the screen. Uh, uh, Psalms 105 in that 37 verse. We're going to read this here. You know, it's, this is going to get real good. And you're going to be happy. <laughs> Listen to me good. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among the tribes. Now out of those 2.5 to 3 million people, you gonna tell me that there's not nobody with an ingrown toenail? <laughs> there's, there's not nobody with a, a knee ache, a joint pain? You gonna tell me what nobody in that trap sick with nothing? But, 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 but the scriptures, but, but, the, but the book say, you saw? They may have been sick when they were eating. But when they, when they ate all of the land and came out, it was the sick one in the bunch. It was the sick one in the bunch. It was the sick one in the bunch. In other words, God had healed them. God had blessed them. And I want you to know that this meal we're talking about, it, it is not a happy meal. It, it is not a big man. It's not a quarter pound. Not a cheeseburger. It's not a Philly steak. It's not a sirloin. It, 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 it's not a, a, a seafood plan. This is the Lord's body. And there's power in the Lord's body. 
And I want you to know, I want you to know, preach, Pastor Jack. Don't tell us, man. I want you to know this, God, that you're your pastor. And I'm right about you. You don't have anybody in the house that's going to bless you. You don't have anybody in the house that needs to be healed. I want you to know that healing will come today. It's at your fingertips. You will be healed. In other words, I, I, I want my pocketbook here. Anybody need their pocketbook here? I need my pocketbook here. I need to get here real soon. I got one dollar in me. I need to get here. Not only is there healing, but in the Word of God, there's healing for your body. There's healing for your mind. 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 And if you take it inside of you, you just speak. See, we have not because we have not. You have to speak things that are not as if they were. I want you to know that you got power. Just like Paul told Timothy, you need this to stir it up. It's already in you. Stir it up. Use what you got to get what you need. God has already given it to you. Stir it up. I want you to get your bread together. Get your bread together. Get your bread together. Because, but I want you to know that, that, that when you take this body, when you take this bread, I want you to know that there's healing in this bread. I want you to know there's healing in this bread. I, I want you to know that when you take the Lord's Supper and you speak things that are not as if they work, you can speak healing to your body. You can speak healing to you. Am I right about it? I can speak healing. Get this, somebody. I can speak healing to our providers in this right here. This our providers is going to have to go. Because I got the faith of God. I'm going to take that communion to God inside of me. Our providers. You got to go. Not only our, all them brothers got to go. Verse 7. Rural, all of them got to know when I take the Lord's supper inside of me and use what I got to get what I need. God's word. If He healed them when they came out of bondage, none of them was sick. All of them was well. Lord, if you did it for them, if you did it by faith, do it for me today. There's healing in the Word of God. There's healing in the Lord's Son. You can be healed today. You can be healed from cancer today. You can be healed from pain today. You can be healed from depression today. You can be healed from sickness today. You can be healed by taking the Lord's Son. There's healing. There's healing. Healing in it. And I believe it for my transgression. Yeah. He was bruised by our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes.
And this drink that we are about to take was be symbolic for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, body and blood. And as we take it, Lord, let us take it knowing that we are here. Let us take it knowing that we have power. Let us take it knowing that we can call out on your name any time of day or night that we do have part of you. And I want you to do get the bread out and take that bread. Break it. Eat it. And when you eat it, say, Lord, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. Every time you take the Lord, I'm healed. I'm healed.
you had four cups. But now that I have come, you got four things in one cup. Am I right about it? In other words, one cup. In other words, if you got your cup, where is your cup? Get your cup together. More ready to bless you. Get your cup together. And I want you to repeat after me. Get your cup together. Get your cup together. Repeat after me. With this cup, I'm sanctified. With this cup, I can handle affliction. With this cup, I've been redeemed. With this cup, I can receive confirmation. For God got a place for me. Take it and drink it.
Deacon John Keith Hill here at St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. In other words, pick up your telephone. Call 704-524-6873. And Deacon Hippie will be glad to talk with you and share with you and give you some direction as to which way you need to go. You might want to be a member of the church. You may want to join. Or you just might want to just give your life to Christ. The main thing I'm asking you to give your life to Christ. Join, that's even better, but the main thing is giving your life to Christ. That's what I want you to do. But if you have enjoyed the service today, and you want to give the pastor a call, you can call me at 704-864-622-62222, extension 208. And if I'm not there, leave a message. And I will gladly, truly gladly call you back and be able to talk with you. But if you want to be uh, a supporter, you want to help this ministry here at St. John, and we don't try to tell a person what to give, whatever God places on your heart. Way you can give, then you can give it in a check, and in a cash. You can bring it by the church. Someone will take it in. You can write a check, and, and you can mail it. And if you mail it, you would mail it to St. John Missionary Baptist Church, 1282 Bradford Heights Road, Gastonia, North Carolina, 28054. But there's other ways. We have PayPal. You can pay with PayPal or Giveify. There's many ways you can give to help this ministry. And every help we get, we definitely appreciate it. And your giving is not in vain here at this facility, this church. We can give you a tax right off at the end of a year. If you need that, we can give that to you. We want you to know that we love you. We want to help you any way we can. But this is all for today. The day has come to a close. And I want you to know that we here at St. John love you so much. But God loves you best. And I will see you next week. Same time. Same place. Bye-bye.